All right, so like I said, I'm not at home, so I don't have a table or anything to be able to lay this uh, hanger on so I don't break the floor, but I'm gonna use a one and one eight is what fits this uh, pressed in uh, bolt here. So I'm gonna put it underneath, but just to make sure I don't break the floor, I'm gonna put a piece of wood and lay this down here. I'm gonna make sure, of course, the nuts are flush and then I'm gonna hammer. Don't be shy. All right, so here is the passenger side hanger. So here is the spacer. The two bolts that you're gonna use, I'll just take them off so you see them, because it's tough when you're looking at the instructions, all they do is list what the bolts are. They don't actually show it, unless you're the actual guy that created it, it's tough to see. So it's this one, and they're, notice that they're different sizes. Now the passenger side are the longer of the two. Now, even the, the, the two that are long, they're still, let me show you, they're still not the same size. So you use the original nuts, by the way. So you can notice that there are difference in sizes. See the difference here? And you're gonna notice that, so the, the one that's the longer one is gonna go in the front. So this is the front here, right? This is the front. If you're unsure which way it goes, there's the round end and then there's square end. The square end or the squarer end is what's gonna be showing. So what I mean is when you install it, it's gonna go like this. And bam, the long one is gonna go in here on the second hole inside there. Put this nut on real quick. You'll use the original nut. Then of course the shorter one, like so. Now obviously I'm gonna take this off, put the hanger on and then I'll put this on, but just letting you know how it goes. All right. And of course on this one, it's easy to know how that goes because there's an indentation. And by the way, on the driver's side, you don't need a nut. These are designed to go straight in, in replace of the one that you took out. So there's a little indentation and so that only goes one way. You can't, I mean, there's no indentation on the other side, right? So it goes like so. The long one goes in the back and the shorter one goes in the front. Okay. To All install right. these uh, spacers onto these hangers, it's a T, it's a T55. All right. Now, let me go ahead and cut the diff. When it comes to cutting the differential. I'm looking at it from where the yoke goes. So I'm gonna make sure you cover or somehow seal the tube so the oil doesn't come out all the way. Flip over, right? It'll stay, hopefully. Ah, dang it, don't stay. All right, I'm gonna put this over here. There we go. All right, so you're looking at this. You're gonna count one, two, three, four, five. Looking at the yoke, and then you're gonna cut right here. So what I'm going to do, Make sure I don't mess up is use a pen and mark. Make sure you uh, you put thread lock on these. Thread lock was on there before you got it, so make sure you put some thread lock on there. Now I'm installing uh, installing the passenger side uh, spacer with the hanger. It's a 22 millimeter nut on top. Position here and use my torque wrench to do the rest.
myself, try it for like an hour. Thankfully, the sock whisperer here, AKA Joe, he uh, just literally just, just jacked. I finagled and he just jacked. So either get two jacks or another person because I don't know how else I would have been able to get it in. So now I'm gonna get the yoke in, then put the cross member and voila. I'm gonna stretch that vent hose because it is sitting a little bit lower now with that uh, spacer. So I had to go pull, pull, pull. I go all the way over here, go to the front, and I just grabbed that, uh, grabbed it and pulled. So that's what you're gonna have to do. And by the way, while you're at it, let me show you something else. Um, when you put this new nut on, they don't tell you which washer, they just give you this name and that doesn't tell you what kind of washer, but this, this uh, big washer that you're looking for, when you put the nut on, of course you got the, the lock washer with it. Get the yoke back in was a little challenging. Um, here's what I did. I got the uh, bracket around the, the part that I marked. So I'm gonna show you real quick. So there's the mark I made. Got the bracket around there, but uh, kind of wedged it in because it was really far from it. And I, I just couldn't hold it. I used this crowbar and I wedged it against it with one hand while I tighten it. And now it's in. So now I'm gonna get the other part in and we'll be good to go. All right, now I'm doing the cross member. I'm gonna get a hammer and knock her in. Here, where I shaved, it's perfect so it can fit. So, you gotta make sure you shave enough. All right, it's in. If you can get it in, you can use a screwdriver to kind of get the bolt centered. You're gonna have to grind those fins off there because that cross member bolt, to get that in, you're gonna have to grind off those because it sits a little bit lower again because of the, the plate. So just a heads up, don't, don't think that you mess something up because of it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, CV axle bolts in, then put, go ahead and put in the, uh, the strut. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, strut on. But in order to do that, I gotta knock off, gotta knock off the uh, upper controller. I already removed the bolt. 19, now I'm just gonna hammer until it comes off. Make sure you don't hit anything else. The reason, well, I'm taking it off for two reasons for that, but also the boot is punctured. You need to just, because I put this, uh, on before I put everything else, so maybe the pressure got to it because I didn't have it all leveled, didn't have anything that's done so far done. So over time it could have just you know eroded because it wasn't built for that, or I put too much grease in it initially. That's what happens when you put too much grease as well. First, the lines don't, they don't, the, the spacer doesn't match up, just a twist. Pop these on there while I'm at it. These are the new bolts we'll use. All right, so tomorrow I'll press this out, put the sway bar links in, tighten this up, and I'll put the, uh, plate for the uh, new diff and we're done at least on this uh, on this front this is the uh, front is the hardest in my opinion the back will be next all right so now i'm going to install that uh differential plate because it sits a little bit lower obviously you want to protect it so it's going to sit just like this assuming you're looking underneath your truck with your head facing the front and so he's going to have uh, it's like upside it's an upside down l it's going to be like that this one's going to go on the uh differential and the other two self-tapping bolts are gonna go on the uh, on the front. And now you're supposed to get three bolts. The instructions say two bolts, which is the reason I'm doing this. It's just, it seems like they're conflicting information. And I assume because there's a lot of application, I think they should specify the instructions for each specific vehicle so you don't have conflicting information. So this is these are the self-tapping screws you're gonna use. 
and I only got two, but I already called them. They were sending me a bag of bolts. All right, so let's put this plate in. You know it's bad outside when you're using a heat gun just to keep your hands warm. So let's get it going. Got the front end done. That's what the front end of a lifted Suburban should look like. I haven't put back any of the, uh, the shroud that covers any of the engine components yet because we're gonna take out the headlights. But uh, that's all she wrote, folks. Anyway, if it was helpful, um, if you had some suggestions, some best practices, um, love to know what you guys have done and uh, what I did wrong, right? Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Magnificent signing out.